Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Avada. You're watching Vintage Motocross Q&A, and tonight we have a special edition with a very special guest, Mr. George Ackerman. We'll be joining me in just a moment. We'll be talking about his career in racing along with a very, very special place that he has built for all of us to enjoy, the Moto Barn. Stick around. We'll be back with George Ackerman. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Body. You are watching Vintage Motocross Q&A. The show is made possible with the help of Motion Pro, Vinco, Preston Petty Products, Racer X, the International Motocross Museum, and Full Circle Racing. My guest tonight is an avid motocross enthusiast, a uh, longtime racer, all-around great guy, and now he has built something called the Moto Barn. I'd like everyone to welcome George Ackerman. George, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So, George, uh, before we get into the museum and all the amazing memorabilia you have in there, as, as well as the motorcycle, why don't we go back a bit and talk about how you got involved in motocross, probably back the same time I did, maybe the mid-70s or so. How did motocross come to you? Well, we lived in South Carolina. We moved to DeRitter, Louisiana, and we lived in town at the beginning while we built a house out in the country. And my dad worked at paper mills, so we'd moved around a good bit. But we settled there in Derrida, and uh, uh, we saw all the mini bikes and the Sears and the Pennies. So we we bugged dad for a mini bike, and he finally got us one for us three boys to share. I have two brothers and a sister. So we rode that in the alley for a few months, and I don't even remember what happened to it. But we we moved out into the country, and uh, you know, by then we were past many bikes. I was. I wanted a motorcycle. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, once again, I finally got got him talked into buying me a real motorcycle, even though my first one wasn't much. It was right. a, it was a Harley Davis Rapido, and anyway, I had that a bit, and all I wanted to do when I rode was uh, go fast. I mean, I how just long was it? Fast. How, how long was it before you actually got into motocross and onto a track? And were your brothers well, involved in that too? Yes. Uh, my brother, uh, Mark, was my pit crew. He's the youngest brother. And my brother, Tommy, supported us when he came to the races. He was older. And uh, my dad built the bikes and the engines and taught me all about everything to do with motorcycles and engines, even though he had never even owned one. Wow. He worked in those paper mills as a maintenance and maintenance all his life. So a uh, motorcycle wasn't no problem for him. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I got a Suzuki TS-90 and, uh, you know, we, uh, we cut our teeth trail riding and climbing everything we can find. And I finally decided I wanted to race motocross, me and a friend, Greg Copenhaver. And uh, we both got kits. Uh, Suzuki made the hop-up kits. Yeah. And I got one for the TS-90, and he got one for the TS-250. And and we got my dad's 68 GMC, and it had a uh, camper shell on it. We put a mattress in there, and, you know, we went to the races. And off you went. Hey, yeah. George, while I'm thinking about it, I forgot to make a little uh... – a little plug here. Don't forget to keep sharing the show, whether you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube. We'll be giving away a beautiful little sticker sheet like this, compliments of Vintco.com. The winner of that will be announced on our Vintage Motocross Q&A page on Thursday. You're in the pickup truck. You got yourself a camper and a, T, uh, a TS90, and you're out there racing. Where are some of your first races? How soon is it before you move up to a CR125 or one of the other special models at that time? Okay, well, my first race was February of 72. Mm -hmm. And I raced the TS-90 for probably 
maybe six months. And I've, I've got a CZ-125. And uh, I was successful on it, even though I, I probably weighed 120 and it probably weighed 270. <laughs> but but uh, when the when the uh, you know it was it was strange the uh, the bike I had engine trouble and we rebuilt the engine and after that I I came out and I didn't even race it maybe once or twice and I heard about the we had heard about the CR125 and we had ordered one okay and it wasn't long after that it came in and I remember I went to the Honda dealership to get it. And I, uh, they let me ride it right there before I bought it or after I bought it or whatever. And I remember when I first rode it, they had a little practice area. And I came back and I stepped off of it and looked at it. The first thing that came to my mind is I'll never lose again. Yeah. You know, it was just that. Yeah, good. I know what you mean. It was I just do. something else. Now, like you kind of dream about, you know. Yeah, and you don't realize, you know, when you get off like a, a TC90 or an, an SL125 back in 71, 72, 73, we all went through that. Yeah. And then you get on a CR125 or even a YZ, uh, your, or your TMs back, anything like that that had premix, two-stroke, a little bit better suspension, downpipe, and that thing started to scream. And you thought to yourself, well, this is, this is the fastest thing I've ever ridden in my life. There's nothing faster, you know. And yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we, 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 yeah. I could flick it around where that CZ, you, you couldn't even do a wheelie. <laughs> now, now, uh, George, uh, the, the, the audience maybe don't realize that you and I have met before. Uh, we met out at Terry Goods International Motocross Museum fundraiser and a few other times, and we do stay in touch. Uh, I, I noticed that there are some newspaper clippings. You had a rather successful career riding uh, at the amateur level or the expert level. Tell us a little bit more about that. And did you go from 125s to 250s? How did that happen? Well, I mostly rode 125s and I uh, had all of my success on a 125. I, uh, I won on 250s and I raced them. But like I said, I was such a skinny little kid. Even mm -hmm. an elf over 250 felt heavy to me. So, uh, you know, I, I raced locally, and then there was a tri-state championship that came up, and it was Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi, this tri-state. It was held in Manny, Louisiana. But first, you had to go through a big series of races. And uh, this was a big championship back then. It was a big deal. We didn't have Loretta Lens, but we had these series like this. And uh, – a lot of people from other states could jump in there too. You just had to meet the criteria yep. of the amount of races. And uh, I remember I, I won the Louisiana points championship and I won, I was the points champion. Uh, I won the tri-state points championship, but they didn't do it like that. They had a, uh, a one race shootout. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, had I was sponsored then by, I'd got a sponsor, a semi sponsorship with CH Industries out of Van Nuys, California. Sure. Cliff Hughes yeah. was his name. Yeah. And uh, he sent engines and pipes and jerseys and all, all the stuff we needed. And uh, I really wanted to win that race, but I didn't. I, I finished second the first moto. And uh, second moto, it, it, you know, it started to come a thunderstorm and it was just horrible. And they didn't stop races back then for nothing. And, I wrecked and I finished uh, fourth overall. Okay. And after that, I I, I tried to enter a uh, race at uh, at uh, New Orleans, the national. But in the well, I finished third in the qualifier, but I fell. I was leading the qualifier, got the whole shot, and I fell. But I got up and finished third. But I hurt my thumb really bad. So I couldn't race after that for about a month. Then I met a girl during that month <laughs> and I forgot all about any kind of pro career. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I just started racing for money. And that's where, you know, that's about the time I raced around about that time. I raced a lot against a lot of other pros that were retired or just happened to be there like Gary Bailey and Scott Jordan. Sure. A lot of people I uh, uh, 
Texas Mike Jones and people that was in the area. So I raced right. against a lot of fast people. Rick Madol was a guy that was really fast. He gave me a lot of trouble. Uh, it was it was just a great time. After that, I just had a good time until you know I got beat by. I was in Oklahoma at a night race, and I got beat by a 12-year-old kid. And I was like 19 or 20, I think. And after that, I just, I don't know. I told all my friends that was it. They, they didn't believe me, but yeah. I was done. I, you know, I just, there, there comes that time, <laughs> there comes that time where uh, either we get hurt or we meet a girl or, you know, mom and dad just can't support our hobby anymore and we're not all that great and we're not getting any sponsorship uh, support and there comes a time where where that just ends and you realize uh, that your dream of being on that level uh, of a professional racer is is just not going to happen and, and and things change. So, but just give me one second here, George. I got to thank one of our sponsors, Preston Petty Products. Be sure to visit them online at PrestonPettyProducts.com. There's always a great special going on at Preston Petty Products. So, George, uh, after you know after the the, the career. Your, your first career in, in motocross ends. I mean, life goes on. You get married. We never think that the old bikes are ever going to mean anything again. But here you are sitting in a building full of memorabilia, full of amazing motorcycles. How did you get back uh, reintroduced to, well, we know it is vintage motocross, and I guess that's what you call it. How, how did vintage motocross come back into your life? Well, you know, uh, my father passed away, and and I was just on the computer one day, and I was thinking about my old L snores and stuff, and I got to thinking, you know, I wonder if anybody even messes with the old bikes anymore. Yeah. And I get on the computer, and I find out there's this this you know this group called Arma. Yeah. And they race bikes, and I meet this uh, gentleman named Ray Tyson who was in this area, and I joined the Potomac Vintage Riders then. Uh, that was like 2002. And uh, I wanted to race, so I, I bought that 77, and I, I uh, fixed it all up. And I, Ray, Ray Tyson really helped me. He encouraged me to come out. He encouraged me. We'd have a good time. He told me you didn't have to go fast if you didn't want to. I was unsure of it all because I had to go to work. Yeah. You know? what, what year? What year? What, what, was, what year was this, George? About oh, okay. two thousand two. Yeah. So I was in my forties and uh, late forties, later forties, and mm -hmm. and uh, I raced uh, till twenty eleven in Arma. I won a lot of races, a lot of championships. I won national races. I had a, a really but the whole time, you know, I seemed to be, I had a lot of trouble breathing. And uh, my friends, you know, they, they seemed to have plenty of breath, even the ones that smoke three-pack cigarettes a day. Yeah. And in 2011, I found out, you know, about my, I got this genetic heart condition, so I had to retire from racing. But uh, besides that, I've just, uh, I start, you know, I got to thinking about, I got all, I kept all my bikes. And my mother, my wonderful, wonderful mother kept, all the pictures. See, I had a professional photographer follow me around and took pictures everywhere I went for years. And the gentleman is still well known in DeRitter and Beauregard Parish. He's still alive. What's his name? His name is Wayne Harper. Okay. As a matter of fact, talking about that, the Beauregard Parish Museum is just contacted me and they're going to start a series of my photos. Uh, they have a lot of my photos from the past okay that Wayne took and uh they're gonna start a series of that and there a lot I've a lot of newspaper clippings and stuff around me locally lots of tons of stuff they got all the stuff and the, my mom kept all that stuff and I had all that I, I had a, a million trophies but I managed to keep about a dozen and then I had all the armor trophies that I'd won over the 10-year career yeah and uh so I wanted to build a shop, you know, and then I got to thinking about, well, I'll put all that stuff out there and display it, right? And then I, yeah. so I got to put my, I decided to put the bikes up on like a podium and it just kept morphing out. And then I just kept adding on and people got interested and 
I got in contact. That's when I met Steve Wise. Steve Wise uh, helped me a lot when I was really sick. Sure. And and he, uh, I was going to get him to come to my church, but he, uh, my brother said, why don't you just get him to come and do something in the motor bar? And it kind of went from there. We had that first event and everybody loved it so much. So I continued to improve on the motor bar. And I had the second event and I had a lot of pros, you know, Warren Reed, Don Kodowski. First event, I had uh, Gary Bailey and Steve. I had uh, Martina, Fault of a Cope. Uh, I mean, all so, kind of. So let me, let me ask you this, George. You are, you're building this moto barn or this building to put your bikes and uh, trophies in. Do you know at that point you're building a, uh, a, a museum? Is this something that you had on your mind? How many square feet is this building, first of all? And we're going to get a look at it in just a moment. We're going to be going around with the camera, taking a look at some very, very interesting uh, bikes and memorabilia. But first question, you're, you're building this building. Do you know it's going to become a, a, a museum, so to speak? And how many square feet is it? It's 1,500 square feet, so it's not real big. No, right. I didn't. I, I was bit first. I built it. It's all about me. And then I got to, you know, there's a lot of things that's happened over the time, you know, uh, some of us are fortunate enough to be able to go to museums and travel sure, and get autographs and see pros. And it costs money to do that. And there's a lot of people that don't have the money to do that. So I got to thinking about, uh, you know, people that I'd like to have a place where people could come do that. And it costs nothing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I want them to leave with more, you know, now, I ask for donations here, but all I do is uh, I I just give the money to, you know, someone else. Right now, I'm going to – I'm supporting the International Motocross Museum and uh, Legends and Heroes Tour and uh, the book, The Stolen Title. Uh -huh. And, you know, whatever monies I make here – see, I don't make any money. Whatever monies I get, I just give away to somebody else. Okay. Where is this museum located? Is it on the property where you live? Uh, what what town are you in there, George? Yes, it's it's, it's right. In, my house is real close, and it's I've got twenty acres here, so there's plenty of room. I live in uh, a little town in Virginia called Ruther Glen. It's actually an area, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it's uh, it's out in the country. And what's, what's the uh, biggest everybody, town? Everybody, everybody in other words. Let, let me ask you this: what What's the biggest uh, What's the biggest attraction near you? In other words, some people may say, uh, you know, and, and I've heard this happen. You know, a, a family, a mom, and the kids want to go to uh, want to go to Disneyland, and it's in California. And the father, who's a motorcycle enthusiast, says, "Yeah, that's a great idea because Tom White's museum is right down the block, or the Peterson yeah. Museum is in L.A." So I'm wondering, what is near you? Uh, maybe within an hour, two, three hours, that people might go uh and it's an attraction there but then they can get over to ackerman's motor barn oh there's so much here is there uh, uh yeah uh, king's dominion amusement park is right down the road uh the civil war history is unreal my my whole property is a battlefield it was really? a battlefield i mean and there's so many I've, I've got there's probably at least six major battlefields within an hour of me Fredericksburg and Fredericksburg is just a wonderful place to visit. Downtown Fredericksburg is undescribable. The history. You walk in downtown Fredericksburg and there's churches and there's graveyards in the churches and the names on the graves are people you read about in history books when you was in school. Hmm. That's the way Fredericksburg is. And okay. they dress up on certain days like colonial. So that's a nice place. Richmond has a lot of Civil War history. Uh, Petersburg, Spotsylvania. There's just so much. It's a lot of Civil War history around here. It's a big thing. Okay. Well, that's that's good to know. Uh, in case the kids suddenly take an interest in history again in America, and uh, the dad could take them down there, and then get over to to the Moto Barn and uh, and see everything that that George Ackerman's built there. Uh, what I wanted to ask you is. 
you, you built this building. You, you had motorcycles and trophies, and many of us who've raced in Arma and throughout the years get that. But when do you start collecting other things, and what are some of the other things you have in there of interest? And we're going to get a look at them in just a moment. But before we get a really closer look, tell me about how you came upon some of the other interesting pieces of memorabilia that you have there, George. Okay, well, when I finally decided I would just fill the place up and – turn it into what it is. After we got all the woodwork up, I, I, I didn't I didn't say anything about this. The whole inside of this is 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 framed up with 120 year old barn wood from a tobacco barn. So that's the motor barn thing. And the wood in here is beautiful. It's just stunning. It's something you can't find anywhere. But when I decided I was going to fill it all up, I you know, I had to do quite a bit of shopping. And, you know, I had pe people, uh, I had pros donate things to me. Uh, people donated things. I have numerous. Tell me about that. Who, who did uh, you have? Who donated what? Tell me. Well, Texas Mike Jones, he's donated jerseys. I'm looking at three of his jerseys, numerous pictures, uh, other memorabilia, uh, I've got uh, I got a I've got a friend named George Neblin and he donated some race war Jeff Emig gear. Mm -hmm. And uh I have a Cannondale here that's donated by a gentleman named Rick Chris Forrance. And uh he can he, he was gonna come get it, but he decided if everybody's enjoying it, he's gonna leave it right here. So it's a big hit. Well, I, I also understand, you, you know what we could do now? And we've got our, our wonderful man on the scene, Brian Webley there, who's doing the camera work for us this morning. Brian, thank you so much. Why don't we go around for a minute there, George, and take a look at some of the pieces that you have. And one piece before I forget, and I doubt you would forget, but I might forget to ask about it. I know you have a very interesting document there from Edison Dye about how uh, – Motocross came to America. It's been authenticated by a few legendary racers. Uh, I want to see that. I want you to tell us about that, too. But wherever you want to begin, uh, by going around with the camera and maybe pointing out some, some interesting things there, uh, let's see what you got. We can even start at that Cannondale if you want, wherever you want to go. We'll start at that Cannondale and uh, go past the Enduros and come up here to the motocross stuff. Sounds good, Brian. You're on. And while we're getting ready to move around there, I just want to thank Tom McAllister and Full Circle Racing. Full Circle Racing is your one-stop shop for spokes, rims, nipples, lacing, and trimming. Tom McAllister, thank you for all you do for us here at Vintage Motocross Q&A and for all that you do for all of vintage racing throughout the Northeast. Here's the Cannondale. How did this come about, George? Well, you know, when I first built the place, a gentleman named Rick, Chris Florence, he, he contacted me, and he lives on the North Carolina border. Okay. And he said he had this Cannondale and it's hidden in his basement. Nobody gets a chance to see it. And he uh, he donated it for display. And it's been in here ever since the beginning. And it's just a unique bike. Okay. And it's just, uh, uh, what, Cannondale, I mean, if, if people don't remember... I mean, it was a, a short-lived thing. It is a very unique motorcycle. But uh, do you know any more about the history on Cannondale while we're taking a look at it? Yes, I know. Uh, I know that it was called the biggest flop in motorcycle history. <laughs> in motorcycle history. They, uh, their problem was is this bike has a lot of really nice stuff on it. it the yeah. suspension was the best you could get. Uh, the welding on the frame, the frames were work of art. Yeah, all aluminum, yeah. The, the engines were actually made in the USA. Uh, the, uh, I mean, ATK was involved, but they were made here. They, yeah. they, I mean, the bike says made in USA on it, which is really cool because you don't ever see that on a dirt bike no. like this. But, uh, you know, the engine, I haven't ridden it, but Rick told me the engine is very powerful. It's a 440. This is the enduro version. The motocross version is the same without the lights. Okay. There's no difference. 
What, um, what is that? What is that bike right there next to it? With that red fiberglass looks like a Rickman. A Montessa. That, that, we got. That's a Rickman Montessa, and that's the okay. bike I just found at the York Swap Meet. I was there the day you bought that bike. I remember that. It, you bought it, that it, in Osa. A little more detailing. The pipes got too shiny a pain, and but it'll it'll be a. I can turn it into something that looks really nice and original. It's hey, a real hey, original hey. bike. Okay. Hey, Brian, I'm just wondering if you could, uh, can you give us a shot around that building just so we could get a, a kind of a broader view of exactly how big it is and all the stuff that's in there, maybe swing around a little bit with that camera? Wow. A lot of jerseys, a lot of trophies. So you got the floor epoxy there, George. You did it the right way, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Show them this. Now, what do you got? A couple of Steve Wise jerseys there, too? Yeah, yeah. Signed jerseys by Steve Wise. I uh, got Don Kodowski here. Uh, mock up and helmet and a, a really nice jersey. This is his jersey. This is on loan. This is an award he got this on loan. Very nice. Kodowski gave that to you on loan? Yes. I just visited him and went to the race in Tampa. Yeah. And uh, I brought that back with me. And I've been talking to Barry Higgins. I, I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to get him to come to the next event. These are some yeah. cool mini bikes I restored. Yeah, tell me about that. Tell me about that, George. Tell me about that little mini bike up on the wall there, that, that purple one. That's a 1970 Arco chopper. It was called an Easy Rider 1. Now that one's a resto mod, but it's close. Right below it, with the white engine, is an original. But that's a later model. It has a little different handlebars. That's the '72. Then there's a Rupp beyond that. Uh, we might have missed that. You missed a lot of stuff. There's a Rupp Continental. That's a '66 model. Okay. I restored that or semi restored. We'll get over here to the motocross. Here's Roger DeCoster's. Uh, here's Roger DeCoster's race worn leathers. Now, how'd you and come across? How, you how, did, did you come, how did you come across that? I mean, that's not something you see every day. How did you wind up coming across a pair of Roger DeCoster leather pants like that? Right, these were in another museum, and I cannot quote the name of it right now, but the owner passed away. Okay. And they were selling a lot of the gentlemen's uh, items. And I yeah. I made a deal on this. And I, I got this. There was three items that I bought this. The leathers and these cool CZ boots that Roger had in his closet. And he never even wore. They still got the tag from the other museum. Huh. Have you ever That's seen cool. CZ boots? Hey, George? <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I never have. George, here's what we're going to do. We've got to take a little commercial break. And when we come back, I want to see uh, the Edson dye paper. Can you work your way over to that? We're right at it. There it is. All right. Hang on a second. We're going to hear from our sponsor, Vinco. And then we'll be back with more George Ackerman and the Moto. Vinco, who already has a full line of vintage parts, now has air shocks that are an exact duplicate of the original air shock so popular in the late 70s. So whether you're looking to build a full racer or a museum showpiece, these shocks will give you that incredible 70s look and improve your bike's performance. These new air shocks are fully rebuildable with Ventco Rebuild Kits and all shocks are hand assembled in the USA with all new components. Every component is brand new. Just like the originals, our air shocks are adjustable with two chambers, high and low pressure, giving you tremendous flexibility for settings of your bike suspension. The Vinco Air Shocks come fully assembled and ready for installation. Just add air or nitrogen. The kits include the manual and spacers. Visit Vinco.com to check out the Air Shocks and all that Vinco has to offer to help you get back on track and keep that ride going. All right, we're back with George Ackerman and the Moto Barn. Just a few moments ago, we were talking about a very, very interesting piece of memorabilia that George has. He got it uh, 
not directly from Edson Dye, who has uh, who had passed on a while ago. But it's it's a very very interesting document. George, tell me tell us about exactly what this is, how it came in your possession. What is this piece of paper? It was donated by a gentleman that had it, and he said he had it for in his drawer, in an envelope for decades. And he he wanted me to have it. He didn't. He wanted it to stay here. I could do whatever I wanted to do with it. He didn't want it anymore, but he definitely wanted other people to see it. So here it is. Can we zoom and in I, on it, Brian? It and, and real. Go ahead. Go ahead. Zoom, zoom in on that a bit, Brian, for us. And then George could talk about it as, as we're taking a look at it. I knew it was real when I got it. Uh, the signatures are in ink. Uh, I just knew it. It was stapled together. Yeah. I kept what, exactly, what exactly does it say, George, and who signed it? I, it's, it's signed by Edison Dye. Yeah. And it says that he is uh, International Motocross of California. Does it, what does that say, distributor? I don't have my glass. Well, and uh, Oscar Vaughn, a distributor at that point, but yeah. Yeah. And Robert B. Hicks, who's Intersport. Ink. Uh huh. All right. If you read it, read up on it. These are the people that did this, and it, and it says in San Diego, nineteen sixty-eight. Let's see. And, the and following the apparent, the Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read it. Well, here's the important part. If the the yeah. following appearance and expense money will be guaranteed to enter for three hundred, uh, five hundred each for Torsen Hallman and Joel Robert. And Dave Bickers, 400 for Roger Coster, 300 for A.K. Johnson, and a sixth rider of comparable statue. The sixth rider must be a Russian or East German of world statue. We'll provide, Interport will provide the following instead of the 300, 300 parents plus 100 airfare, plus 110 political manager expenses. And I found out from Torson. And Gunner, that that sixth rider never happened. They never picked him. They never got a Russian. They were looking at Falta, from what I understand. I believe. Now, this is back in 1968, George? 68, but I'm not sure about that. I don't know when Falta was on the, when he started. But anyway. Um, okay, so this document is, is this to bring the uh, Europeans to the Inter Am series? Is that what yeah. this is about? Yes. Intersport okay. Inc., which I guess they use that Intersport as an interam series, will guarantee it goes on to guaranteed money. Uh, they agree to set European riders for the appearances. They they've got all the races. This contract is for the years 68, 69, and 70. So wow. it was the whole interam series, this series. Okay. Here's some of the guys. Here's Edison with uh, some of them when they come. Yeah. There's Edison. Uh, that's Joel right there. Yes, it is. Uh, here's Edison with some of them. It's yeah, just I think, a, a Chris, really Chris, Chris I think Chris Der Hamagern is in that picture. Uh, of course, Torsten Hallman. Um, uh, might even be, uh, uh, Aki Janssen might even be in there at some point too on a Husky early on. I think don't quote me. But I remember Maybe. Gunner was very interested. He, he wasn't on this list, but he was very interested. He knew all about it. Right. Right. What, tell me about that FMF Jersey. Anything special about that, George? No, it's just a cool Jersey. <laughs> oh, hey, okay. I hear something right here that's special. What's I that? Just, this, this is, uh, a picture of Heike is signed by him. Oh, yeah. I just got it framed up. I hadn't put it up on the wall yet. Yeah. There's not many of those. But we'll go over here and look at some motocross bikes. Yeah, let's go down the aisle there and take a look at some of the bikes. I see you got a lot of Preston Petty products there. That's always yeah, uh, shows a great thing to have. Uh -huh. There's some here. Yeah. We've got some signed Preston Petty stuff. <clears throat> cool bike. Here's the, the old... 77 I was talking about. Yeah. Tell me about that 77. You said you had 
uh, done some extensive work to it and you raced it for a while. What was so special about that bike and what did you do to it? And did you race it at Arma? Yeah, it was it was one it was a bike I raced in Arma and uh show them that picture up there. This bike got a lot of hole shots. Uh yeah, everywhere I went. This picture is from Bud's Creek. This yeah. is again all sizes of bikes. This is a plus fifty class. That's me on that bike. That bike was just so fast. But all I did was, like I said, it, it was a really good engine to begin with. And I just poured it and polished it uh, by hand so I didn't do too much. And I did all the tricks, you know, it, you know, polish your uh, exhaust smooth like a mirror and rough up your intake. And I went with a 32 Makuni on this bike. Okay. And uh, I've got uh, box shocks on the back, spring shocks, I believe. And uh, it didn't handle very good at all. These bikes don't have very good good suspension and they're in a class of, in armor class with bikes with better suspension but the yeah. bikes but the bikes don't have a better motor these did, motors, did you race that did you race that in the historic class george uh yes historic? that was a bike yes yeah and that was a it's the fast bike now you know it didn't have a lot of travel but I, I just got lucky, and like I told you, I know that sometimes you just get a good engine that'll rev, and this is one of those. It'll really rev up. All right, oh, Brian, right. watch watch, watch your finger in front of the camera lens, Brian. That was me on the 79. Oh, okay, okay. Here's hey, the here. In here. Uh, this is pencil art. Uh, here's the picture, showing the picture first, okay? Right. And here, here's the art. This is one done by Mike Garano out of California. I've got a lot of pencil art in here. My dad. Just just all and more over here. Uh, a lot of the newspaper clippings from back in the day. They put sure. me on the front of the uh, I designed a motocross track. People tell me it's the only 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 been done once and nobody's never did this, but the Borgard Museum is going to find out, but me and two friends of mine, and they passed away. We designed a motocross track inside a Fort Polk, inside the Army base. And I designed the track, really? and we got the Army to pay for building the track. Then we got the Army to pay for a race that we had on the track. And everybody had to come on the base to go to the race, and the Army did all this, and they sponsored the race. I have the flyer where it says it's sponsored by the U.S. Army. And as far as I know, I don't think it's ever been done. But the race was fantastic. And, you know, we had a budget for entertainment. And you're not going to believe this, but we went out and got Rufus with Chaka Khan because <laughs> nobody knew who that was then. Yeah. But we got them like two months before the race. And during the time while we were waiting, they came out with a hit called Tell Me Something Good, and it went to number one. Yeah. So when we hit them at the race, they were like a big deal, but they had to come. We already paid them. <laughs> That's a really, really great, great story. Yeah, I, got a lot of, I, got, I got a lot of people that was there that remembers that. It's just, but that's the picture of, uh, they put on the four fold paper. They used one of my pictures. It was called the Outpost. It says motocross set at home. But we did that. We we had friends in the military, okay. and we all got together and went to the master sergeant and just pushed them, you know. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at, uh, let's go over here, Brian. Lots of pictures. Did you show them some of these pictures, mm -hmm. Hey, hey, George, you have a little Yamaha, Yamaha street bike up front. Well, maybe we'll, let, let's go one step at a time here. What is this mini bike with a Hodaka engine in it? What's going on mm -hmm. here? Is, is, Believe it or not, that's probably the rarest and the most valuable thing in here. It's it's a Bonanza CR500 chopper. This is the way it came. You yeah. could get this under your Christmas tree if you had the money in 69 and 70. They made it two years. They say they run 65 mile an hour plus. Uh, what is there, a jack shaft on there? Yeah, it's got a jack shaft drive. It's... uh. I've never started this one since restoration, but uh, 
I bet it sounds pretty. I don't know what it would sound like with that pipe. Yeah, with that pipe on a two-stroke Kodak engine. It's probably, I'm sure it's loud, but that's a really rare machine. And I've seen, you see them, but I haven't seen one nicer than this one. I've seen some that were close. And I've got offers for that one, but I'm just, that's, that's just, uh, I like unusual things. Well, you've, you've got some unusual of ones. You've definitely got some un unusual ones there, that's for sure. A lot of original mini bikes in here. And what is some that one? Steen? You got a Steen in there? Yeah, there's one up, uh, there's one up there above us. Oh, there's the Atex. You ever seen an Atex? Yeah, I've heard of it, sure. There's a Fox, Sundowner, a Coleman, another Arco Chopper, a Tote Goat, a Fox. This is a homemade. And I've got a taco. A what? This is a taco. This is an old taco. This is back when the only taco you could buy came in a kit. Oh, a taco. Yeah, like Joe Ravello is selling out. No, but this is a real oh, taco. Man. This yeah. is like a 1962 taco. Okay. And it came in a kit, and uh, it's got the old Clinton Panther motor on it, two-stroke. And uh, that's an original except for, you know, the seat cover. I never did restore it. I think I'm going to leave it just the way it is. The only original but it called one. Out, they called it a frajoli. It stands for bean. Yeah, frajoli, yeah. Frajoli, yeah. So it's yeah. a bean. Yeah, it is. But it was the cheapest, and it only came in a kit, from what I understand. Here's the Jeff Emig gear. This is, some of this is Jeff Emig race-worn gear. There's all kind of cool stuff here. There's pictures. These pictures that my – these pictures – of the pits and some of these are priceless. I mean, these are just different pictures of pits back in the seventies when we raced and, and line up. So people line, you can count the else the word on some uh, more pictures, just a great photographer. It took great pictures. These are more proof photos. A lot of these photos are originals. Me right. and my CZ. Hey. There's my CZ. Hey, George. George? <laughs> Yeah. I gotta. I have to plug a new sponsor, and then we're going to get back to more of some of the stuff you got in here. But you're going to be interested in this, and I'll tell you why. Our new sponsor, okay, is Replica Motorcycle Parts. His name is Paul Parkinson, and he is making some incredible stuff uh, from 3D printing and from rubber. He's got – here's a great item. He's got 1974 Honda CR125 air filter cage. Those things are very, very difficult to come by these days, and he is reproducing those as well as uh, the, the filter cage that goes inside of it. He's got some 78, 79 counter shaft sprocket covers for your Hondas. Here's a big item I know a lot of people are going to want, the chain slider for the 78 through 80 Honda CR250. And that's Replica Motorcycle Parts. They've got a, got a new website. It's up, and he's changing stuff all the time. I was hoping that by the time I did this show tonight that we would have some uh some of the products because we are getting some mail to us i was hoping we'd have some of the products here that we could show the people but we will have them soon and i will be doing probably an interview uh with paul parkinson and talking more about replica motorcycle parts you'll keep him in mind george when you need some things uh maybe for some of your restorations okay yes all right, all right. what else we got in there man come on okay we got scott boots are brand new Right. They're NOS. We've got North Star boots, NOS. A lot of cool boots and stuff. These, these right here, you know, I found these at a flea market here. And, and then I hear they're really rare. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Enduro jugs, those, I know those are rare. Uh, this is a cool piece. It's a genuine Team USA. ISDE 95 jacket that Doug, there's only eight of these don't exist, I believe. Nine, nine. I think it was six riders and three, six, no, it might be, I think it was six riders and three mechanics or two mechanics and a manager. How far is Gary Bailey? How, how, hmm? how, how, how far is Gary Bailey from you? And did he uh, give you anything for the museum, Gary Bailey? I know he's a really good guy. 
something here. We I'll get to that next. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is just from an international trip, and some of the mentos from that. And uh, Tom Benoken. There's a lot of pros. Here's Mike Jones. Is uh, some of the stuff he donated. Uh -huh. All these jerseys and these are pro jerseys. Really nice stuff. Uh, these enduros over here I ride. I can't ride motocross bikes anymore, and I can't ride heavy bikes, but yeah, still can ride these bikes. And uh, that's why they're parked over here. They're aimed out. They either going to be ridden or they need some kind of tinkering done to them. So, and the Suzuki's a project. You know, I'm going to show you Gary Bailey stuff. I like to work on, I've got a room over here, this climate control yeah. that I work in there a lot, but I like to work outside. So a lot of times I open this door over here and I've got a screen that goes there. And so I work in this area a lot where this Suzuki's at. I just like listening to the birds. Now you're taking so, me over to see some to see some Gary Bailey stuff, something that Gary Bailey sent you. Yes, I've got I've got a cycle news up here with Gary on it. And I've got now I've got some cool ads with Gary on many bikes. This right here is cool. This is the the slip that Gary signed when he entered the, the Firecracker Grand Prix International Motocross race in California. And I mean, he looked at it. This is 1968. He looked at it. He was like, where in the world did you get that? <laughs> I kind of missed a secret, but I got it. And he said, that is the real deal. So I've got that. I've got some other photos. I've got something over here that he donated. Got who donated? Gary. Oh. Uh, here's the room. Now, this is a mess, but this is where I work. And right now I'm working on mini bikes. Uh, okay. Gary donated this, and it's a really cool item. It, it chronologizes his, almost his whole career, every race. Or, you know, it, it says that's some of them, but it's a lot of them. And where he finished, where they were at, it's just a neat piece. I'm hoping he'll be here in October. Oh, take a look at this. We got to give this. A, we got to give this a plug. Oh, that's Everybody great. Book. One of these. Jerry Coping, the stolen title, of course, the book that was put together with with uh, uh, Cop Coppings and uh, and uh, Martina Falta, of course, who has been a guest on my show. I did a great interview with her several months ago. But it's, uh, you know, that's some of the highlights. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, the Enduros over here. I've got some really interesting bikes here. I mean, this bike has 38 miles. So that's a brand new Yamaha, brand new 78, basically. Uh, some of these other bikes have just a few hundred miles, two or three hundred miles. And this is a real rare bike. I got this at the swap. And that's at Osa 175 Pioneer. You know what, George? That was the best deal I know. At, at York yeah. that weekend. It was. And you know was, why? It was a diamond in the rough. The bike was, wasn't was detailed. It didn't look like a nice bike at first. But when I look closer, and, you know, some of us know a little bit more and what to look for than others, I said to myself, this is a diamond in the rough. And it wasn't long after that where I saw you wheeling that bike out. Well, I had made a deal on that bike before it went there. Oh, okay. I've had my eye on it for years, but he was too far off. And he said he was going to be there. So I made the deal, so it was mine to pick up. Ah. But, but I, I had to do it that way because I knew that if he got it there, somebody would buy it. Yeah. Somebody would have bought it for for what price he had on it. Sure. And I was worried about that. So I went ahead and, you know, got him to put a for sale sign, a uh, sold sign on it. Yeah. But it was nice. That and that oh. Montessa that you bought. And I'm not even finished detailing it. it it's going to look even better. The, the bike was dirty. That's why the price was so cheap. Yeah. So, George, yeah. you said something about having uh, somebody come down there in October, either having Gary Bailey come back or somebody. Are you having an event in October? Yes. My event is October 28th. My events now are uh, 
unless something changes, they're always going to be that weekend before Halloween. Last year was the 29th. This year is the 28th. It's on a Saturday. It's uh, it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's free. We cook. Uh, Steve Wise will be here. He'll do his Moto Fellowship, the Wise Word. Uh, Warren Reed is going to be here. Don mm-hmm. Kadowski will be here. Uh, Martin, I'm sure Martin will be here. I wouldn't mind trying to make it trying to make it back there myself. That's a beautiful time of year to be on the East Coast too. And Gary, you know, last year he didn't come, but he had had recent back surgery. Yeah. So I'm hoping Gary will come, and I'm hoping Barry Higgins will come. Uh, yeah. I mean, Barry Higgins, what a great guy. He is. And really, right. truly, uh, an American, an American pioneer. He was the first, first guy with a factory sponsorship. Really, yeah. I mean, he he, he can he can really tell some great stories. He can. George, we are going to take a break to hear from our good friend Terry Good in the International Motocross Museum. Well, we're not going to hear exactly from Terry, but we're going to have a little International Motocross Museum plug here. Then we'll be back to wrap it up with George Ackerman and the Moto Barn. We'll be right back. All right, we are back with George Ackerman. We've been speaking to George for about the last, oh, almost an hour already. And uh, George, what do you got here now? Uh, what is that? Donated by Billy Clements. And, and you know, if you don't know, I know Billy. Billy sure. Clements, I know yeah. you do. But if yeah. People don't. He, he was he was really involved. A great racer that was involved. I mean, there's a picture here of Billy Clements with the Husky team, and you wouldn't believe some of the people in that picture. I mean, Billy's in there, but there's all kind of super pros that were in on, on that team. Yeah. And uh, he donated this and, and much more pictures and stuff. And, you know, I'm forgetting. I mean, I've got Gary Chaplin in here, Mike Chamberlain, uh, uh, Tom Benokin. I got a lot of other people. A lot of people. I'm forgetting people, but I've got people that uh, Mike Jones, it donated a lot of stuff and support me. And I just appreciate them. Don't you have a Brad Lackey poster in there somewhere? Yes, I've got I've got posters from you. <laughs> you you, you got to get it right there. Here it is. <laughs> and that's awesome. And and you've already told me there's not many of them around. I'll tell you how what happened. It was many many years ago, going back early 2000, 2001. Uh, I was going to a banquet and I knew I was going to meet Brad Lackey there. And there was a centerfold in a magazine and it's a picture of Brad when he left Honda and he was going to Kawasaki and it's got a tailor there next to him. So I went to a printer with that magazine and he had that made into a poster and Brad signed it. And uh, I guess it was about four or five years later. Tragically, Jim Pomeroy had uh, had been killed in a Jeep accident, and we were all trying to raise a couple of bucks for Linda, Linda Pomeroy, and I sold poster. That's the only time I'd ever really sold anything with someone's autograph on it. But I, me and a few other people had donated some money to Linda Pomeroy after Jimmy's passing. Well, I went out and I had that poster made again, and I had Brad sign it again. So there are only two of those in the world. I don't remember who bought the first one. It was an eBay auction. It raised quite a bit of money. And then Brad signed that one for me again. And uh, I thought it would be a good place to have it is uh, down there in the motor barn with George Ackerman. So when you said, when I, when I said I wanted to donate something, I wanted to donate something special, not just anything, 
but something that was uh, a little on the rare side, a little unusual with an interesting story behind it. So yeah, there's only two that I know of, that's for sure. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Now, this is a unique item. Uh, uh, Mike Garano got with Brad Lackey, yep. and Mike did this, and they sold copies of this for years, and they made money, and they mm -hmm. were left with this original. And, uh, I, you know, they offered it to me at a good price, so I got it. I got all the rights to it. Uh, it's one of a kind. Nice. It's the original drawing that they made all the copies. So that's a nice piece uh, that I was able to acquire. Something unusual. Yep. George, you got 1,500 square feet and thousands of pieces of memorabilia. Once again, your event happens every October, the, the, the Saturday before Halloween or, yeah, the Saturday before Halloween. And this yeah. year it happens to be on October 28th. 28. And, and it's from four to, uh, I mean, it's from, it's from 10 to four and I announce everything on Facebook and I usually branch out to a lot of the motocross sites uh, a few times, but I'm, I'm not having trouble getting a full house. So if you want to come, well, here, here's the deal. I can only sit 60 people inside the motor barn right. while they listen to the speakers. After that, we remove all the chairs and it's open house and I can take as many people who want to come. So okay. after one o'clock, come at one o'clock and open house. Now, if people, I'm full, if, you know, people can I'm also full. come come there when there isn't that special event going on. You allow people to come there and they can contact you how through Facebook, social media. How can people contact? Well, everyone's seeing this on Facebook and YouTube, but uh, is that how they should contact yes. you if they want to okay yes facebook okay. by pm send me a pm we'll make a date i mean sure anytime i mean i might be able to do it on the same day oh okay i mean up uh, you know and I, I like groups because this is a lot to maintain it's a lot of work and i yeah. i want people to, i want people to see it and enjoy it i really do so I'm into any of that, local groups, meetings, whatever. My and guest it's all tonight free. has been George Ackerman, The Moto Barn. You can catch him on Facebook. He does have events there. PM him if you want to go at any other time of the year. George Ackerman, I want to thank you so much for taking uh, some time and getting through your Moto Barn. And, of course, Brian Webley, who did a great job on the camera. This is very, very important. It makes all the difference in the world. Good lighting, good sound, and a good cameraman is what made this really, really special. George, thank you so much again. George Ackerman from the Moto Barn. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome, George. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Well, there you have it. My guest tonight has been George Ackerman. He does have the Moto Barn down there in Virginia. Don't forget, we have some events coming up in the very, very near future that I'm going to be a part of. I'm looking really, uh, looking forward to being at the 50th anniversary festival for Can-Am. We have that coming up. We've got sponsorship opportunities always available. Get a hold of me, and I'll get you on the board here at Vintage Motocross Q&A. And, &A. and uh, once again, why not? We'll thank our sponsors, Motion Pro, Vinco, Racer X, Preston Petty Products, the International Motocross Museum, and Full Circle Racing. I'm Joe Avati, and you probably want to see the, the, the pooch. Huh? Let me see if I can get him. Gino! 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 I don't think he's going to come out today. During the end of the he isn't out here with me. And uh, we try. Here he comes. Whoa, here he comes. Gino! There he is. Gino made it. I'm Joe Abadi. Thank you, George Ackerman, Brian Webley, everyone who watches Vintage Motocross Q&A, Jordan, Chelsea, and Susie, and you, the viewers at home. Don't forget, go back to the page tomorrow and find out who won the sticker sheet, complimentsofvintco.com. Have a good evening, everyone. We'll see you next time on Vintage Motocross Q&A.